Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Before we start the meeting, before we start the meeting, there's a couple of couple of things I'd like to uh, to do. One is to allow Alderman Kittleson uh, to say a few words with respect to the cleaning project uh, of that uh, occurred Saturday at, at Sheridan Park. Alderman Clay Yunus. I mean Kilson. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you so much. This is a part about being an alderman I just love because Saturday morning we had just a wonderful event um, in Sheridan Park, and I'd like to give a big, big thank you to everyone who came out this past Saturday morning to help clean up approximately a 16-block radius that began and ended in Sheridan Park. Um, the folks who live in that Sheridan Park neighborhood were largely responsible for the manpower that helped to collect two dumpsters full of trash and litter and also collected uh, at least five large truck and trailer loads of discarded items that were taken directly to the city's drop-off site. A lot of hard work was done by many, and I'd like to give a big, huge thanks to the Cub Scouts of PAC 3812 from Sheridan School under the leadership of Louisa Johns. Those little guys, and along with their leaders and even several of their family members, some of who live outside of the Sheridan Park area, are to be commended for all their hard work as well. I'd also like to thank the aldermen who came to help, Alderman Bob Ryan, for uh, coordinating and donating items for the cleanup uh, celebration. Alderman Corey Balk for donating all the Johnsonville brats and hot dogs and uh, the helping hand he gave. Alderman Wangaman was there with his trailer parked at, at the park and he held listening sessions with citizens. And I'd also like to thank him for taking pictures of the people that were hard at work. Thanks to Eustacio Medina Jr. who provided music in the park for the picnic celebration. And a big, big thank you to our off-duty police officers and our Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride board members who were there as well as their spouses who showed up to help with the effort. <laughs> Thanks to our Public Works Department for delivering and picking up the dumpsters and our City Engineering Department uh, for the beautiful map that they helped us with as well. Many thanks to the neighbors of the Sheridan Park Neighborhood Association area who I believe are concerned, caring people who want to make a difference in that area of the city. And most of all, a million thanks to Officer Todd Preby for always being a role model, for always supporting and working tirelessly for a cause he truly cares about. Again, many, many thanks to everyone who participated on Saturday morning. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're almost ready to start the meeting. Was that about the same thing? Yes, Your Honor. Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to add also a thank you to uh, Veolia, who, uh, who uh, graciously accepted our uh, discarded refrigerators and all free of charge. Wonderful. Thank you, Omar Ryan. The second thing, uh, a little unusual, but uh, Alderman Baug, feliz cumpleaños. That means happy birthday. It's his birthday today. Wish you many more. And before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Nearly all people can stand adversity, but if you want to test a person's character, give them power. Thank you very much, Madam City Clerk. <coughs> call the 13th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Excuse. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Rinfleisch, Here. Ryan, Here. Smith, Here. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, excuse, and Wonkeman, 14 present. Quorum's present. This time, we pledge our allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. Alderman Vanderweel, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Approval of minutes, President Hanna. 
Thank you, Mayor. I would make a motion to, um, to accept and approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There be a none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a uh, letter to the mayor, the Salary and Grievance Committee, and members of the council dated October 1 from Ed Surik, Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, advising that uh, he's submitting his letter of resignation uh, and his termination date will be December 31, 2007 with the remainder of his earned vacation for the month of December. Uh, probably be working through October and November. Uh, signed by Mr. Surik. Mr. Surik was unable to be, to be here tonight. He asked that, uh, that I excuse him. I, I did want to extend my heartfelt appreciation for the number of years that he gave to the city of Sheboygan, uh, just as other employees have done. Uh, we, we thank him and we appreciate his work. I would ask for a motion to accept and file. So second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. William Bittner to be appointed as Director of Public Works commencing October 15, 2007 and expiring October 14, 2012. Signed by the Mayor. Mr. Bittner was one of the applicants uh, for the position of Director of Public Works. He was, the applications were screened by the Civil Service Commission. Several applications were selected, his being one of them. And subsequent to that, the, the Civil Service Commission recommended two people uh, to me for review. I interviewed both. My committee, my interview committee, consisted of uh, Interim Director of Public Works, Dave Beeble, Bill Balky, City Engineer, Paul Ed Andrews, City Development Director, and Susan Hart, my assistant, and myself. And we were very impressed with, with Mr. Bidner. He cannot be here today. He, he lives in Rockford, Illinois. And his whole resume, uh, is, his background is in uh, uh, Director of Public Works Management. Uh, he, he comes to us as a very seasoned, very articulate, very knowledgeable, well-rounded individual. And I am pleased to, to offer you his, employ his employment with the city and add him to our team. This time I would ask for a motion to accept. Confirm, I mean. I'll make that motion to confirm. Second. Thank you, President Hanna. Thank you, uh, Vice President Boren. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Uh, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Paulette Enders to be reappointed as Director of Planning and Development commencing November 3, 2007 and expiring November 2, 2000. 12, signed by the mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Typically, this appointment lies over. Paulette Andrews is unable to be here during the next common council meeting. It's important to her to be present when this appointment is confirmed, as I hope it will be. And uh, I'm asking you to uh, have someone suspend the rules. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make the motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second. Is there any objection? There is none. I need a motion to confirm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm very pleased to make a motion to confirm Paulette Enders as Director of Planning and Development. Second. Motion and second to confirm. Any discussion? Alderman McClavinus. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to commend Paulette for her energy and her approachability. It's always easy to get a hold of her, to talk with her, to get explanations, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. She has uh, been a tireless worker of the city. Um, I've had the honor and the pleasure of working with her for two and a half years. Uh, at times people say that she has a lot on her plate, but that's because she's superwoman, in case any of you didn't know that. She, uh, she's incredibly dedicated, very hard worker, knowledgeable, committed, and I am pleased that uh, we will confirm her tonight. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. And yeah. 
hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Per a verbal resignation by Alder, Alderman Daniel Verhassel <coughs> as chairman of the Salary and Grievance Committee meeting to Mayor Juan Perez and the Salary and Grievance Committee on September 24, 2007. I hereby appoint Alderperson Marilyn Montemayor as chairman and Alderman James Gisha as vice chairman. Signed by the mayor. This typically would lie over to, but we need to get the ball rolling, so I would ask for motion to suspend. Um, President Hanna? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would ask that we suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second, suspend the rules. Is there any objection? There be a none, I need a motion to confirm. A motion to confirm both appointments. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Renfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm looking at the, the statement here, uh, per a verbal resignation by Alderman Dan Verhasselt uh, at a meeting. I'm a little uncomfortable not having that in writing uh, at this point in time, not having been at the situation, not knowing what's going on. Um, I see no reason not to approve the, the recommendation, however, uh, but uh, hopefully I ask that in the future, in the Alderman in a similar situation, please do so in writing that we may you know, truly know the situation as at hand. Thank you. We can ask him to follow up with a written resignation, too. That'd be fine. Thank you. Good point. Alderman Brinflesh. Any other discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. One nay. Motion then, carries. Uh, finally, as chairman of salary and grievance, Alderperson Mottmeyer to be considered for appointment to the City County Shared Services Committee, the Marina and Harbor Committee, and the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to fill the unexpired position of Alderperson Daniel Verhassel, whose term expires on 4-14-08, signed by the mayor. And once again, typically this lies over, but by virtue of being chair of salary and grievance, you get the honor of being in another committee, so I'd ask for a motion to suspend. Present. Second. second. Motion and second to suspend. Any objection? Need a motion to confirm. Motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Alderman. Next item is a proclamation for the John Michael Kohler Arts Center. And I'd ask uh, Ms. Ruth Kohler and who else is coming up? Mary Jo, please. We have a, a, we have a proclamation for the John Michael Kohler Arts Center. It's for its 40th and 40th birthday, I should say. And may I say what a remarkable accomplishment. Thank you very much for being part of our, our community for 40 years. It's just, it's just a wonderful thing, isn't it? I think they deserve a hand. proclamation and present it. It says, whereas the John Michael Kohler Arts Center is celebrating its 40th birthday in October of 2007, and maybe I should add, and they're burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> That's what this says. I won't say that. <laughs> and whereas in 1967, the John Michael Kohler Arts Center began with thematic exhibitions in the parlor and classes in the carriage house of the 19th century home of John Michael Kohler, and whereas for the past 33 years, the arts industry program has provided hundreds of artists from around the world sophisticated technologies, free materials, and housing to create bodies of work not possible in their own studio. And whereas the Arts Center's collection of work by artists and environment builders is the most extensive of its kind anywhere in the world. And whereas over the years, the Arts Center has expanded its variety of programming to include the I should be holding this, to include the Footlights Performing Art Series, the Connecting Community Series, Festive Fridays, various festivals and special events, a preschool program, lectures, tours, classes for all ages, and whereas the Arts Center has more than 160,000 participants in the 2007 and is supported by 1,500 member families, 145 corporate and foundation donors, 522 in-kind donors, and 600 volunteers. And whereas all of these activities serve to deepen one's appreciation for the arts. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, as mayor of the city, do hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations on your 40th birthday 
of the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, and I urge all our council members and our citizens to extend their congratulations by attending the various birthday events to be held for 40 continuing hours at the center beginning October 12th. Congratulations. Thank you, Mary Perez, and thank you, council members. We are thrilled to be a part of Sheboygan. Every day, Sheboygan gets more and more exciting. And um, we hope that we play a, a substantial role in that. In the last two months, well, in July and August alone, we had 62,000 people come to the Art Center and become involved in Art Center programming. And um, the last weekend alone, we had approximately 275 room nights uh, booked by people who came to the Art Center. So we are trying to help the, the um, area economically and bring joy to many, many people. We think that probably our attendance is going to be about 200,000 this year with some extra things. So we hope that you will all come to the birthday we have lots of things going on from cult classic films like the Rocky Horror Picture Show and the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes to, to um, nice workshops and bands, um, et cetera, for the birthday. So do come. Thank you. Wonderful. We have Alma tomorrow. Do you want to say something? Uh, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Having been part of the Art Center and helping out and, and promoting the Art Center for lots of years, I just wanted to say a couple of words about one little section, one big section actually, that Ruth Kohler is very devoted to, and that's connecting communities. She truly believes and works so very hard to have the whole community in, as part of the Art Center. Thank you, Alvin Montemayor. We have one more, Alvin one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's a piece of information I'm not sure that uh, people here are aware of. Not about a year ago on the Travel Channel, they had a program on to discover the world's 10 greatest restrooms. <laughs> and they went through the list, and number one was in Hong Kong where they had solid gold commodes. Number two was the Kohler Art Center in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <laughs> so we have a claim to fame here in Sheboygan as having the world's second greatest restroom. So if you're in the area, please stop in. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin Weigman. And once again, congratulations, Ruth, Mayor Joe McBurry. Thank you for being here. Next item is public forum. Uh, Madam City Clerk. Um, first on our list would be Steve Wimmer. If you could come on up to the front podium here, please. And Mr. Wimmer, if you want to pull the mic kind of up towards your little taller so we won't hear you otherwise. There you go. And I need your home address, please. Okay. Uh, my home address is 2715 North 25th Street. Okay. And then you will have five minutes to speak. Okay. Now? Go ahead. I would like to thank all of you for the opportunity to speak in front of all of you today. I'm here today to voice my opposition to the proposed rezoning of land from residential to commercial on North 24th Street. The developer, MRAD Cummings, wants to place a large Walgreens on the corner and he contends that he can't unless he gets the required rezoning. We as a neighborhood feel that yes, a Walgreens would be an excellent addition to the neighborhood, just not the one that is being proposed at this time. <coughs> I feel that it is very important that you all understand that this is not the neighborhood against Walgreens. This is strictly an issue between the neighborhood and the developer. We strongly contend that a neighborhood, that a smaller Walgreens, one that fits within the existing commercial footprint, would meet the neighborhood, the, I'm sorry, the needs of the neighborhood and Walgreens nicely. MRED Cummings in the past has been forced, and I don't use the term forced lightly, to change the design of a proposed store. MRED Cummings tries to stick the big box cookie cutter version of its stores in as many places as it can. The only time I can see that MRID Cummings has altered from the cookie cutter concept is when forced to do so by, from community activists and local political leadership. 
The same arguments, threats, and tactics being employed by this developer are the same techniques that they have used when faced with opposition in the past. We, the neighborhood, have been in constant contact with our local older persons and mayor and members of the planning department. I have sent emails to every older person sitting in this room. I have only received responses from three other older persons besides my own. During our last neighborhood meeting, we were advised by our older person to avoid the label, not in my backyard. I felt that we have been everything but that. That conversation did make me think about the different labels that are put on individuals, political bodies, and leaders. It is easy to cast labels. It is harder to get to know people and to actually take the time to hear their concerns. Our neighborhood, and I in particular, have been labeled as difficult to deal with. <coughs> MRD Cummings was interviewed by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel about a new Walgreens they built down there. MRD Cummings wanted to place a big box cookie cutter store in a neighborhood. They were met with stiff neighborhood and local political opposition. They were forced to change the design of the store in order to better fit the neighborhood. When asked about the experience of building this store, MRD Cummings said they were difficult to deal with, but in the end, everyone got what they wanted. So a group of normal citizens and local political officials who were passionate about their neighborhoods in MRD Cummings' eyes were difficult. Well. I guess I accept wholeheartedly the label difficult. I love my neighborhood. I feel the labels that apply to us are family oriented, hardworking, diverse, proud, reasonable, and united. Mike Cummings told us during the planning commission meeting that he would never have bought a house in our neighborhood. I am not surprised because he doesn't even live in our city. Mr. Cummings stated at the last planning commission meeting, the drugstore chain isn't interested in shrinking the store or moving it to the east away from the homes. He further stated that he has been working on the plan for six months and feels he has made all the changes he needs to. Six months. He makes that sound like a long time. I plan on raising my children in that neighborhood, so I feel six months of his time is a small price for a building that I, not Mr. Cummings, will have to live with for the next 25 years. I look out at all of you, and I hope the label not in my aldermatic district doesn't apply to you. My first inclination to think that caused me to be angry at myself because I did to you what I asked you not to do to me. I felt your lack of response was an indication about your feelings were concerning this not so simple rezoning issue. All the persons Hannah and Meyer may be my district older persons, but the decisions you make affect all of us. So in my mind, that makes all of you my older persons. If you approve this rezoning, you will have caused a huge negative impact to my neighborhood. So I ask that you take all of our concerns into consideration before allowing this developer to put his store into his, a neighborhood by his own account. He would never buy a house in. So don't just label this proposal as anything is better than Daryl Witter. We feel that if MRD Cummings is forced to put the Walgreens into the existing commercial footprint, we will get a Walgreens that will not cause such a negative impact to a group of homes that has deserved the label neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wimmer. And last would be Vicki Hall. I'm not as tall. You get, a, you get to pull it down a bit. Okay. Vicki, can I have your home address, please? It's 925 North 4th Street. Does that work? That's okay. better. Great. And you will have five minutes. Great. Thank you. Hello there. Um, I'm here to address the concept of a sustainable Sheboygan, but I plan to wind my way there, so please bear with me. Um, I work in resource conservation for Glacial Lakes Conservancy, serve as chair of Friends of Sheboygan's Parks, and I also serve on the city's Park and Forestry Board. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take a moment myself to voice my heartfelt thanks to the 74 individuals, six organizations, and five businesses <coughs> that were involved with the cleanup of 400 pounds of garbage along our Lake Michigan shoreline from Northeast Park to Lakeview Park on a beautiful September Saturday. We were joining an international event. People all around the world were collecting uh, waste from coastlines and waters that day. Not only collecting, but documenting every single thing they picked up. This data is compiled in a database that, to help inform what kinds of trash and pollution are fouling up our waters. We got a lot of what was out there, but not all. So next year, I wish for perfect weather, more volunteers, and less trash. Thanks to Alder people Hannah and Clahunas for joining us that day. 
You know, nothing prepared me for how many great people showed up for Beach Sweep a week ago, from children to seniors, and I really think this whole idea of a greener community is catching on. Kim Swisher knows the value of a clean and inviting city. It attracts more tourists. Green tourism keeps popping up in the media, like this one. There's a new program from the state's tourism division called Travel Green, which signs on businesses and communities who pledge uh, to be more sustainable. So if you're a traveler and you want to travel green, you look them up on the Wisconsin website, and you make your travel plans accordingly, or you look for their Travel Green logo. Um, some have said that Sheboygan has an incredible opportunity to change the perception of our community to a region with a rich variety of alternative transportation, like Portland. This could include a fun gondola ride across the river from north to south pier as an alternative to a bridge, just a suggestion. Um, part and parcel with that new vision is the condo boom in our central city. I think it's fair to say that many of the residents of those units will be looking for a forward-thinking city one that is at the forefront of adopting sustainability. And before you is a resolution for just that. The definition of a sustainable city can be found on an excellent 48-page document, which I hope that you will all read. Uh, basically, sustainability means that the city considers an increase in energy efficiency, a reduction in fossil fuel use and greenhouse gas emissions, and a protection of its natural resources as it operates. The guide is called Toward a Sustainable Community, a Toolkit for Local Government, available from UW Extension in print or online. This guide deals specifically on how a local government can internally change its approaches to energy, buildings, transportation, purchasing, investments, and hiring. Lucky for us, this trail has already been blazed, so, and you won't have to invent the wheel. We can follow the communities before us, like the cities of Ashland, Washburn, and Madison, Douglas and Bayfield counties, and more, who have pledged to work towards becoming an eco-municipality using a systems approach. If you sign on to this endorsement, it's a great first step. I would suggest that you might go beyond this endorsement in the future and get the community involved with planning and oversight. Uh, our city departments have begun to do some sustainable work already, like energy efficiency in our traffic signals and others. So let's keep track of it in reports and publicize it. This kind of success and innovation is a win-win for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Okay, thank you very much for addressing the council. Next item on the agenda is a consent agenda 13-1 through 13-21. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move that uh, all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. <coughs> Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull item 1315 and ask for a separate vote. 1315, an RC by the Mayor's International Committee recommended amending the composition of the Mayor's International Committee to increase the membership from 15 up to 17. I need a motion, Alderman Hanna, to put the res uh, report, accept and adopt report of committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion <clears throat> to accept and adopt RC 1315. Second. Pass the motion. Motion pass. and second. Subs resolution. Pass the substitute resolution. And, okay, the motion is to accept and adopt the RC and, and uh, pass the substitute resolution. And, and there was a second to that. Under discussion, Alderman Member Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. The reason why I, I uh, asked for a separate vote is because in the last three years we've changed this number a couple times, and I feel that we should just leave it the way it is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. <coughs> Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I just would like to say that the, the substitute resolution is changing that up to 17 members. We don't necessarily need that. We are at 15 right now, and we can stay there. But we just wanted to. Our committee is a working committee there, and um, if we ever need the extra people to to do the fundraising and that type of thing that we do, we were just looking to maybe increase it at that time. It's right now, we'll, we will keep it at 15, but it's just if we can take it up to 17 in the future, um, when the need arises, that is what we're looking at right now. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McKittleson. Any more discussion? Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Kittleson, uh, 
the up to 17 members, uh, I'm assuming the mayor would decide how many members to appoint each year based on probably input from committee members because the way I read up to 17, that could be five. Mm -hmm. That could be 10, could be, you know. <coughs> so that's fine with the committee? We're, we're fine, we're at 15 right now and if, if we need to go up to 17, we could, at the mayor's discretion, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the appointments would be confirmed by you, the, the, the common council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? No. And Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Now we need to uh, act on 13-1 through 13-21 with that exception. And there was a, there was a motion to, to pass... Any more discussion on that? There is none. Please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1322, 1323, to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 1324 by City Plan Commission recommending endorsing the principles of sustainability as outlined and apply these principles in its decision making, planning, policy making, and municipal practices and pass a substitute resolution. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. And I believe you had the corrected one that. Okay, that's the one you're acting on. Under discussion. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, counsel this body to, uh, to be somewhat skeptical on this, uh, this opportunity. Uh, through no, I want no, nothing disparaging to be thought about the, the woman who spoke earlier or about the uh, distinguished older person from the 5th District. It's just that um, I, I think these things uh, in the resolution uh, are wonderful things. We all want this. We all want clean beaches. We all want uh, to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and all these things. I think this would be a distraction from the very few things that the taxpayers of Sheboygan have hired us to do. Uh, we have about 48 to 50 committees in this town already, and I'm not sure that the formation of another committee with such vague, vague and grand uh, desires uh, like to reduce dependence on fossil fuels, reduce dependence on chemicals. Those are all wonderful goals and that I'm sure great distinguished people at the federal level are working on. I'm not sure it falls in the purview of what we as a city should be focusing our business on and all of those things can be uh, dealt with and can be encouraged without the formation of additional committees. Everyone, all of these things, if we were to decide to buy electric buses, we wouldn't need this designation to have a, a good open discussion on whether uh, an electric bus is a good thing and whether burning the, the, the coal necessary to generate the electricity to put into the batteries, uh, we could have that without this. So I would counsel the, uh, the distinguished members of this body to focus on the handful of few things like cutting taxes that the taxpayers have uh, encouraged us to do. Thank you, Alderman Bog. There is a, uh, a point I should clarify, though. The, the reason I was asking is you do have a separate copy of the resolution. The same issue was, was uh, discussed during the City Plan Commission meeting about creating another committee, and that, act, that paragraph was actually stricken from, from the resolution. <laughs> so the one is being passed tonight should... Yep, everybody's got it on their desk. It says corrected copy. There's a separate single sheet. Looks like this. Okay. Got it. Well, and then I would follow up and that's okay. a wonderful thing, and I'm glad we've had the sense to do that. Uh, then I'm not sure what the economic benefit to our city is to go after this designation. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that, I think it might be a distraction. Okay. And again, that issue was discussed by the City Plan Commission, and the commission felt that by doing, that by passing this resolution, it would be a, a confirmation of the efforts that are being made right now to uh, have a uh, self-sustained community. And we have Alma Clayton. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I appreciate that the committee has um, passed this along to the council to approve. Um, the committee would have been, the extra committee would have been nice, but I asked for it, but I can understand why we won't do that. Um, I also think that we can look at decisions and make resolutions that don't always have blatant economic benefits to what we do. It, this isn't all just dollars and cents. We also have to look at our city as a place that we want to protect. And all the development that's going into the city, all the money that we're putting into the developing areas, buildings, we need to be sure that the environment can sustain them. And that's my, my concern is that we are looking at the big picture and not just the bottom line. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Cleonis. Alderman Kittleson. I, I, no? I'm okay. okay. Alderman Bout, sec second time. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And I am, am not looking at this as just a bottom line. I just have, uh, th these are mom and apple pie in my eyes. These are mom and apple pie goals. And I would hate for this, or this body to spend a lot of time chasing after designations that uh, I'm just, we all want to be green. We all want sustainability. Uh, there are some vague things in here that sometimes outside the municipal level, at the state and federal level, get used for political purposes uh, beyond the discourse about true chemistry and true physics and such of that nature. So uh, again, I, I just think it's a, a distraction for the work that this body and the city needs to do. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Thank you. Any further? We'll take the vote. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I would simply speak on behalf of the resolution. One thing it does is authorizes and reinforces all departments to periodically and consistently, consistently review their policies. And in so doing, uh, we are kept to the task. We save dollars long term in all probability and improve the environment at the same time. It's a win-win. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Manny. Any other discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries, one nay. Alderman Bout. 1325, 1326 lies over to November 26, and Alderman, you have the Mayor's Executive Budget on your desk. Any questions, please direct them to my office or Nancy Buses. 1327, 1342, to be referred, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. On agenda item number 1331, I make a motion to file. Motion and second to file 1331, under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Alderman Renfleisch? No. Resolutions introduced three, 1343 by Alderman Hanna and Meyer, adding an employee representative from Mead Public Library to the Group Health Insurance Committee. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. President Hamm. Thank you. Uh, this will help uh, rectify an oversight in which the uh, library did not have a seat at the table for this important discussion. We're, we're making great progress, mm -hmm. and they very much want to be part of that progress. Very good. And it's a very good idea, President Hanna. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1344, 1346 to be referred. Report of committees 7, 1347 to 1348 to be referred. Report of committees <coughs> 8, 1349 by finance, recommending establishing an early retirement incentive program and authorizing the mayor and the director of human resources to offer the benefits to qualifying city employees. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to accept <clears throat> the resolution and put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to adopt the report of committee and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to um, offer up two friendly amendments to please this do, document. Please do. Uh, moving first to page two after the last further resolved, the date of November 16th, 2007 be stricken 
and the date of October 12, 2007 be inserted. And one additional, um, I'd like to add an additional, uh, be it further resolved, and that would be, be, be it further resolved that the city of Sheboygan also will remain flexible to all legal options for disbursements. Second. There's an amendment to document 1349. Does everybody understand the amendment? Any discussion on the amendment? Alderman Clayton is. Thank you, Your Honor. Could you just explain, Alderman Gisha, the second amendment a little more detail, the opening to all legal disbursements? Alderman Gisha. Certainly. Thank you. Um, as we've made our way through this, this process, we tried to keep a consistent arrangement and offer to all those who possibly may have uh, interest in this program. Um, however consistent, we try to be, everybody kind of has their own individual needs, obviously, for, uh, for the retirement end. So this will allow some to do things such as take the money, a little bit of the money maybe in 08 rather than 07. Uh, for tax purposes for them personally. It makes them a little bit, it doesn't affect our bottom line in the program. Some may wish to prepay health insurance, some may wish to do this or that. And we as a city, I think uh, the, the spirit of my amendment was we as the city would like to accommodate as many people as we can fairly, as long as it's within uh, our, our ability to do so by statute and law. So um, the, the amendment should just give additional flexibility to those disbursements where none really existed in the document before. Thank you, Alderman Kisha. Any further dis discussion? Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to have a, a little commentary in response to this kind of concern. Uh, I voiced this in public works as we talked about it. And <coughs> as I sit down and evaluate the way the finances work out, short term, it works well. Longer term, it becomes more questionable and problematic as to where the break-even point is. So I would like to ask Alderman Gisha, for instance, to respond to this or others on finance uh, for their analysis of the longer term uh, fiscal uh, benefit to this as opposed to the short term. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manning. President Hanna. Oh, thank you. If I may. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, and, and Mr. Mayor, uh, all the person Manning's uh, concerns are valid if you do not marry a concerted effort on the part of department heads to reshape and rethink the way they deliver services. He's quite right uh, <coughs> that it's successful in the short term, uh, but longer term, um, it, it's barely a break even. What's critical? in this is that you'll notice in our proposal that a portion of the savings come back into the city and replenish the coffer. So this is a self-funding mechanism. I think that's very important that people understand uh, that this is not just money going out, but the, the savings is coming back to us at an implied rate of interest. So it's a, it's a good financial decision on part of the city. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Gisha, did you wish to further? Yes, if I may. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, an excellent point uh, from my fellow first district alderman and something that we had a lot of discussion about it was it turned out to be quite interesting because each department has their own needs and end result from doing this for instance DPW's result will be different from uh, the police department's result um, and alderperson Hannah is incredibly correct these aren't just paying off the high and hiring the low you can do that all day long and you're right, suddenly that time frame of payback shrinks to probably three and a half years. Um, we were shooting for five years and beyond. And the only way that works is with reorganization. I think the, uh, the police department has stepped forward with some very aggressive reorganization plans that kind of hinges on this, which makes it quite critical for them. Uh, there was some reorganization regarding the fire department. An example, um, the the people who would take it are going to be replaced by a differential, quite substantial differential in annual pay, but also they come in as potential paramedic ambulance uh, personnel, which is of great help to their organizational chart uh, because of the pending change of January 1. And in DPW, they've done, taken the opportunity to reorganize some, some management structure and some supervisory structure 
We always talk about taking that box and making it more of a triangle of management. And while this doesn't take us the whole way, this is certainly a start that we haven't seen in quite some time. And uh, so some may see it as exchanging a, a $10 employee for a, for a $5 employee. It does go well beyond that internally with the pr presentations that each of those departments made to our finance committee. And the, uh, I want to thank uh, Alderperson Hannah. Uh, we had dozens of meetings on this. Um, and certainly the members of the uh, representatives of our police department, DPW, and our fire department all stepping forward. We tried to have discussions way out in the open. Anybody who'd possibly remotely be interested in this program, come on in. Doors are wide open, open government stuff. So. Their input was just spectacular, and uh, it took a long time. We would have rather that had this before budget time completed, but it was necessary to get all their input and try to get something that seemed fair. But your, your point is, was extremely well taken. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Cleunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Excuse me. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, whoops. Uh, the reorganization that you mentioned, do you feel as if that should be in this amend this resolution. Uh, do you think it's on the road already, um, or are we complicating things? I just want to be sure that this is not just, you know, not a surprise to anybody three years from now if they're in tight spots that they haven't reorganized or whatever. Um, just a question, President Hanna. I think. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I think this is a great opportunity to empower the department heads that are affected by this to use their management skill, which they have a great deal of, <coughs> to craft a solution. Um, I think that our role as older people is really to set the stage, to give them the tools to make them successful. And I think this is another tool we've given them. Um, I, I don't want to overstep my bounds and micromanage the process. I wanted to create an environment where they could make good decisions. Thank you, President Hanna. OK, we will call the roll. On the um, amendment. This is on the amendment. Does okay. everybody know the amendment? Okay. Alderman Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. President Hannah, I need a motion to, to pass as, as amended. I would make the motion to uh, pass the resolution as amended and put upon, I'm sorry, and put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. No. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. <laughs> 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 1350 by salary and grievances, establishing an early retirement incentive program and authorizing the mayor and director of human resources to offer the benefits to qualifying city employee. This is here also because it went to two committees. Uh, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I, I, it seems to me this is a little redundant. Do you need us to pass this one also? File. Just I'll make a motion to file. Second. Both of them? Yep. Motion to file. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1351, by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing appropriation for South Pier boat docks. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> accept and adopt the authorization and put the resolution upon its passage. Motion and second. Second. I mean, a motion and there's a second. Under discussion. Okay. President Hanna. Thank you. I just, I, I want to give some credit to, uh, to all the person, Gesha, for uh, having the insight. Uh, this, this could uh, uh, be a real win for us as a city in terms of bringing uh, trade shows to town, dealing with the, the marina and boats and, and <laughs> Alderman Gisha took it upon himself to, to really champion this and shine a light on it, and I appreciate that. Very good. And thank you, Alderman Gisha. Any more? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. 
Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10, 1352, lies over. Matters laid over 11, 12, 23. Resolution number 105.0708 by Alderman Bourne, Clayunas, Bout, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing appropriations for the Information Technology Department. Alderman Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, uh, for the people watching on television that don't have a copy of the agenda, we recently uh, made the uh, uh, Information Technology Department a separate department. It used to be with finance. And what we're passing here are the various cost centers uh, uh, that we can, you know, that we can do this making a separate department. Right. Thank you, Vice President. <laughs> no formality there. Okay. Please call the roll. Clay Aye. Manny. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Falk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1224, resolution number 106.0708 by Alderman Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget establish an appropriation for expenses related to job recruitment in the Finance Department and Human Resources Department. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll, I'll move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clayunis. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1234, General Ordinance Number 540708 by Alderman Bourne, Wangeman, Clayunis, Manny, and Rinfleisch, creating Article 9 of Chapter 110 of the Municipal Code and repealing and recreating Section 10-2 of the Municipal Code so as to regulate sidewalk cafes in the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to refer this back to the Law and Licensing Committee for further discussion. Second. Could I ask you to refer that to City Planning to? Also City Planning. Is that okay with the second? second. Okay. Under motion and second. Under discussion. Vice President Boren. Uh, I just wanted to mention that the, for all interested parties and in wishing to be heard on this issue, the next Law and Licensing Committee meeting will be Tuesday, October 9th at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor, and I appreciate the Chairman's uh, uh, motion to send it back. That's uh, absolutely appropriate in this case. I, there are several, uh, several vendors uh, and businesses in District 2 who, uh, who, who uh, started sidewalk cafes this summer by getting special dispensation from the city, and uh, it was a very successful summer for them, and they, uh, they, would, they want to be deeply involved in changing this. Uh, there's no... No one thinks that this uh, resolution isn't necessary. It's specifically the uh, elements of Article 110-503, the regulations, things like when we'll tell these people to quit serving their alcohol, things like uh, the, the burden of putting up a physical barrier, the requirements for food service. All of these apparently were modeled on uh, the city of Madison, where they have tens of thousands of students descending on their city uh, that, that like to drink, and mixing students with alcohol creates a different set of situations than we have here in the uh, city of Sheboygan. So I encourage for our folks and friends out there in TV land, if you care about sitting in the sidewalk cafes next summer, I'd encourage you and the owners of those businesses to go out and, uh, and be part of that on Tuesday, October 9th. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Next we have President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just wanted to publicly thank uh, all the person born and all the person Rinfleisch uh, for sending this back to the appropriate committees. Um, my phone has been ringing quite a bit on this issue, so there's lots of interest, and I'm glad that the public is going to have a chance to, to be heard on October 9th. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Wangeman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would encourage the uh, 
aldermen to contact the uh, business places in their respective districts because not everybody watches these proceedings, just to make sure that everybody who is interested would uh, uh, surely be there because we'll certainly welcome the discussion. Thank you, Alderman Wangerman. Alderman Manerville. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, uh, I'm glad this is going back to committee because the discussion is good and, and uh, we could use maybe some guidance on this. But I also need to say that we need to be very careful because right now the perception is kind of out there that we're being anti-business, that, that we want to put more restrictions on people and make it harder for people to do things. And we need to be careful not to make perception a reality. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. And one more, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I would urge the uh, Law and Licensing Committee on this to, to basically rethink the whole thing. Uh, these uh, uh, permission that has been granted to people to have sidewalk cafes has really added a lot to our downtown. When you drive by a place and you see people sitting on the street, you, you get the perception of, of, of life there, of vibrancy, of business going on, and, and people naturally congregate to other people, and when they're sitting out on the street, they're that much more visible. Um, we don't want to, you know, we, we want to be as proactive as we can here to encourage business in the community, not to discourage it. And I, I see no sense whatsoever in regulating a perceived problem when there is no problem at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. There is no more discussion. All in favor of referring back to law and license and city plan commission, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1240. General Ordinance Number 550708 by Element Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the municipal code so as to change the table of organization of the City Development Department Director of City Development and Engineering City Engineer. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? 1353 lies over. 1354 is being referred to salary and grievances. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. 1355 is a resolution approving the second amendment to contract for sale of land for private development, an amendment to promissory note by and between River Park Place of Sheboygan, LLC, and the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan. That will lie over. 1356 is an ordinance amending section 29-75 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to change the title and job code for the assessment coordinator and the assessor's office table of organization. That will lie over. 1357 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various <coughs> license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1358 is a resolution authorizing the proper city officials to sign and enter into agreements with the cities of Fond du Lac and Manitowoc for the purposes of providing clinical ride-along refresher training for city Sheboygan firefighter paramedics. And that lies over. In motion to adjourn. Motion second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.